All right, so in this video, we're going to talk about how to do a hookup test or, you know, basically just testing your system to verify or commissioning a servo motor. Um, now, this could be done for many different reasons, but the main reason I would suggest you do this is if your machine requires the motor to run a specific direction and you do not want to risk the, like if you change the motor or something of that nature and it had been, you know, changed out and obviously motors are wound and built a certain way. So the polarity might be different, right? And you may have a difference in, in what, you know, what's going on or somebody might have swapped the leads. So if you want to verify how the, the direction of the motor, this would be one uh, way to do that, right? So, and this is also another way to verify test markers and stuff of that nature. So one thing I want to highlight it real quick is if by chance your servo is on, right? Right now my servo is off, I have the bus light off and I have the ability to come in into access properties and you know, basically do this, the test marker, a test feedback or a test command feedback. Uh, now, again, that's going in, going to properties and then going up here to what they call hookup test, right? This is the hookup test for, um, in my case, it's a, a Kinetic 6000. Um, but you know you can do the same thing with you know basically any kinetics so uh, you always want to do a hookup test if you're commissioning a servo again I can't stress that enough especially if you're again your machine is depending upon it running a correct direction now uh, when it comes down to it you can change your test increments if you want to um, but I will note too if uh, by chance you notice my bus is off if I do come in here and I uh, go into motion access direct uh, commands and I turn it on or if I home it and uh, just for those that are questioning it if you do home it the servo generally does turn on you can see the bus light does come on on this actual drive you can tell uh, now that is something that happens and notice you can't do any kind of marker test you can't do any kind of hookup test whatsoever if the servo is on so just go into motion access direct and kind of turn it off and verify that now, one thing I will highlight, um, and then as you see right here, we have our, our motion, or we were able to test marker, test feedback, and test command feedback. Now, um, one thing I will highlight too, is if you have this, and, and if you're commissioning it, right, it's generally not coupled to the machine, right? It's not coupled to the gearbox, it's not coupled to anything. What you're doing is you're having it completely separate, but you're having it still wired up so that you're able to check everything. And so I suggest you, you know, have it on a secure place like a floor or something like that, that it's not going to, it's not going to damage anything or, or anything of that nature, right? Then you can actually go through that. <clears throat> now, basically talking about that, you just make sure it's safe. Now, first off, you're going to do a test marker and then a test feedback. Now, a test marker, all you're doing is very, basically verifying that the encoder is good. There's markers inside the encoder. When I turn it, it will highlight it will actually indicate that it is you know actually turning and it knows it's turning so if I do a test marker I can execute I can turn it right here now this is a manual interaction and you see it goes complete now if it did not have a test marker and a test marker fails that means that realistically the servo motor is bad or either you have wiring that's bad or maybe the, the uh, maybe somebody wired the encoder wiring wrong uh, for the feedback cable. Now that's a, that's one way to, to start the testing is real quick and real simple. You can just turn the motor by doing a test marker. Now testing feedback is done a little bit different. That's going to be based upon the increments that you put in this test um, increment. Now also too this is a manual interaction so you would turn the servo and I have my trend in the background so you can see. So I'm going to go 10, 10 units. Okay. And as soon as I go 10 units, it's going to go complete. All right, so it says command complete. Now, what it's going to do here is it's going to verify that the direction did go to the correct direction, right? Um, and that's going to set that, right? So it says that polarity has been updated because it told you in the beginning to move to a forward direction. So when you're testing feedback, you want to always move to the positive direction. So if you're saying to yourself, well, if I turn this way, this is going to be positive. Then make sure you turn the motor that way. Okay, so make sure you verify what is a positive direction for you. And then go ahead and turn it. So that's an encoder test. Now, if the encoder did not 
uh, go the proper direction, that's when you would say no, right? And obviously you are, if you, you wouldn't say no, you would actually change, you would go back and run it again, and then you would run the opposite direction. So if I went this way, and then this is indicating that it is in a positive direction, okay? And then if I kept doing that and it's complete, it's gonna say that it complete, yes. Now it's gonna tell me right now that it's updated the polarity. As you see in my trend, it just flipped the polarity. So I was at a position of 14 and it made it a negative 14. So how would I get that back right if I accidentally did that wrong? Is I would do the test again and I would come back and turn it the proper direction. And I would make sure it goes 10 increments, right? So right now it thinks it's going backwards, but I'm actually moving it forwards. Okay, so then I would change it and you see it flip the polarity again. So my polarity is easily done. Now that's based upon the encoder, which is on the back of the motor. Okay, so that's based upon the encoder and it, where it's wired up to the actual servo. Now, uh, when it comes down to, those are the two tests you can do and you manually interact with them. This next test, I want you to verify that you do not touch the motor shaft at all. You do not. You have it secured on the ground, or you have it secured somewhere that, because you're going to you're going to induce motion, and what you're going to do is is there could be a potential of somebody getting hurt or something of that nature. So I want to make sure you have it secured, for one, and make sure you have your hands off of the the um, shaft of the motor or whatever it's hooked to, whatever the case may be. So this will induce a test. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to test this direction. Okay, so this gonna is an online command that may initiate motion. Watch the direction of the axis during the during the test to execute. Okay, so execute online. It's gonna move in a forward direction, which you have already previously established the forward direction to be. It's gonna go ahead and do that. So now we're actually inducing and running it in a small movement, and you see it kind of it kind of verifies it's it's checking itself, right? This is the, the motor being checked itself. Now, my, my system is wired a, in a 110. So I have a 110 polarity or 110 volts coming in. I'm running this servo as a demo mode. So everything is kind of derated as far as power wise. Uh, just keep that in mind. Um, that my, That's why you've seen the, the wheel kind of jerk like that a little bit. If you see, if you come over here, let's run it again just to verify. Uh, let's do a test. And let's start the motor <clears throat> so it's going to start it's going to basically start moving again don't touch it uh, make sure you have it secured it's not going to run it real fast but it will start running it and you see it's kind of it kind of jerks it around a little bit and then it finally smooths out and finds its way now that's that's pretty standard so that's pretty normal so just expect to have that and then it very as soon as it finishes you're going to hit ok and then it says, did the axis move in the positive direction? Now, again, you do have the ability to change the polarity here as well. Um, in our case, we've already checked it from the test feedback. And we're going to say, yes, it did. Because it did actually move in the positive direction. Now, how do we know that? We actually were running. A, and see right here, it says that the drive was polarity has been updated. It's always going to tell you that, whether it was, whether it did or whether it was the same. Um, but how do we know that we actually had a trend in the background where we're monitoring our actual position? Now, this is some a very important thing to do if you're trying to, you know, basically replace a motor, or if you're trying to commission a motor, or if you have a question about a motor. There's a couple tests you can do uh, to verify that everything is working properly. Also, too, if you uh, need to verify that the direction of the motor is going to be either a positive or a negative whichever direction your machine is requiring it to run when you first hook it up so there's no question whatsoever that the motor is actually what it's supposed to be right so that means somebody wired it up properly and that the motor is actually when it got built that it it has the correct polarity now this was a simple uh, hookup test and I wanted to show you this because a lot of people maybe don't use this feature as much as possible but um, it's something that's helped me greatly in the past and I want to make sure I pass as much information on as I can to help you as well. So when you're doing a, a hookup test, just make sure there's a couple reasons why. Uh, I think we went through them pretty accurately. Uh, make sure you put a make a trend. Um, 
and have it in the background and make sure you do or you are aware of the actual um, order of operation so if you do have it on and the bus lights on you're not allowed to actually do the hookup test right so you come over here to properties and you come over here to hookup all that's going to be grayed out now it's real simple just go into your your uh, motion motion access direct commands again and then turn it off make sure it is off check the bus light or check the drive itself verify that it is off you can also uh, monitor the access status bit inside of the PLC so if I wanted to I can look the action status bit right here which is servo action status you can monitor that bit to see if it's on or not but the, the real key indicator is the, the marker it would be the, the buttons would be grayed out or not grayed out so hopefully that was really helpful you, you learned a lot on that video and again please go back and watch it if you have any questions again this is this has helped me quite a bit in my, my career and I'll make sure that I pass that information on so it can help you as well. So with that said, hopefully you learned a lot and we'll see you guys on the next one.